to sit back as a defensive player and learn from Coach Belichick what you're supposed to do in a situation like that. It's 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 really crazy for me because when you look at this play, don't look at the offense. I want you to look in. I want you to look in the end zone and look at the safeties. Look how mm -hmm. far deep yep. they are in the end zone. And that's Harrison Smith. He's a veteran player. He's an all pro player. You don't ever as a DB sit in the end zone. You stand at the goal line because if they come in front of you and they catch the ball, it's a touchdown. We're taught everybody needs to be at the goal line. Don't be in the end zone mm. because all they have to do is come in front of you, catch the ball, and it's a touchdown. Those are little simple things, little fundamentals. And and Zimmer used to be one of the best defensive coordinators around all of NFL football. And all of a sudden, you see things like this, and it just doesn't make sense. You got, what is this, eight guys dropping in the end zone, and you can't stop one? That means you can actually double cover every receiver out on the football field. Why is number 23 sitting in the end zone? What is that going to do for you? It's just crazy for me. And then teams wonder why coaches get fired, players get cut, because it's those small things. It's the fundamentals of football. And it's amazing to me that that who's ever calling that, whether it's Zimmer or, or his defensive coordinator, like how do you sit there and watch that as a coach and see three safeties deep in the end zone. Why wouldn't you call a timeout? It's, it's just frustrating to me. Right, that's a game they have to win, and you made a great point about the importance of that kind of a loss as you as you look towards the playoffs as well. And this is a game where Kirk Cousins, as much flack as we have given him, Kirk Cousins played a really good game watching this back. Justin Jefferson had a huge game. They ran the ball well. They scored points. So that's where it goes full circle right back to Zimmer's defense. And let's give a little bit of credit on the other side of the thing to the Detroit Lions because the Detroit Lions are a team that has struggled so much throughout this year in terms of losing. But they have been so tough in terms of competing. Every game, it just seems like they're in it right till the end. They play so hard. They want to win for their coach. They love their coach, if you saw that scene in the locker room afterwards. And they finally got one done. I, I kind of like what's happening with Detroit because it's a definite rebuild, and they know that. And Jared Goff's got to go from L.A. to Detroit. Does he want to? No. But it does seem like there is really some awesome relationships developing between their players and their coach, and they're playing hard for him. Absolutely. I, I just – um. I, I got to give a lot of crop props to the Detroit Lions. I mean, I was on a team that was one in 15 and <laughs> I think it was the 11th week of the season when we played, we end up beating um, the Kansas City Chiefs and it felt like it was the Super yeah. Bowl and you know, to get up every single day, get in there and lift weights to work out to practice meetings, study, get the massages, cold tub, hot tub, your whole mm -hmm. your whole day, your process. And to be able to lose every single week, it's disheartening. It's very difficult to come to work. Mm -hmm. I don't care how many zeros those checks have on them. But at the end of the day, you play this game because not only do you want to get paid, you want to win football games. And I'm just so happy for Dan Campbell. He played. He's passionate. The Lions are prepared every time they come out. They fight in their claw. They don't have the most talented guys, but they have a group of guys that right. believe in their coach. And if I'm if I'm Detroit, I'm going to I'm going to Jared Goff and say, hey man, if you want to help us become a better team, you need to take a pay cut. He needs to redo his contract, take a take a pay cut, mm. and maybe put it in incentives to help Detroit lure lure some more free agents over there because that's what they need. They need more talent. Yeah, that's interesting. That's probably true as well. I, I agree with you there. All right, let's get you to number two on Turn the Page Tuesday, which is the Cincinnati Bengals. So the Bengals are one of those teams they can beat anybody and they can lose to anybody. And they got no problem doing either one of them. Where is that coming from for the Cincinnati Bengals? Well, we sit by each other every single Sunday and we watch the Bengals and it's just kind of up and down. It's a roller coaster ride. And what you have to understand with the Bengals is they're a very young team, but they're a very talented team. So with young teams, you're going to get inconsistent play. And you just hope that it doesn't come from the quarterback. But you look at Jamar Chase and how he's been dropping the passes. Then he looks great. Then he drops other passes. And you just look at the inconsistency of their team. And yeah, you could blame the head coach to a certain degree, but this is a young team and they're trying to figure out how to win football games. And the more experience they get, the more opportunities, and this is Chase, come on, come, Jamar Chase, you got to make this play. I mean, you just have to make this mm. play. You know, you're an NFL wide receiver, Jack. 
Fuck. I mean, he's running down the field. I mean, that's just a perfect throw from Joe Burrow that could have been a touchdown, right? I mean, that is just a perfect throw. And this is what we saw in the preseason. He had erased it, and now it's creeping back in. And that's where I agree with you in terms of being a young team. And I'm just looking at the most drops around the league. Debo Samuel has nine. Tyreek Hill has nine. We saw issues with that with him on Sunday Night Football. But the guy who was in third with eight, there's only one guy with eight drops in the league, is Jamar Chase. So he is top three in the entire NFL in drop passes this year. So it's not just a preseason thing. It's something that's following him at this point. And I think Joe Burrow can pull him aside and do certain things, but it may just be a part of the experience with Jamar Chase. The biggest thing I worry about with the Bengals right now is that pinky finger of Joe Burrow, because that is an important finger when you're trying to grip a football. It's one of the last ones that come off it when you're trying to create a spot. Spiral. So I'm a little bit worried about how blown up that pinky finger was in terms of the swelling on Joe Burrow after he took that hit. Yeah, he looked like he was really frustrated and a lot of pain on the sideline when he was trying to throw. He threw his helmet down, yelled yeah. in disgust. So that's something that I'm definitely um, concerned about as well. That's right. He's one tough SOB, though. The fact that he just keeps coming right back in the game. It was, like, it was never even a conversation. So here's the play that he hurt that finger on. Here it is. You can kind of see he kind of gets grabbed right there from behind. Pass rusher coming around. It just gets that right hand of Burrow. He comes right back in the game. He's still throwing it, but you could just tell the discomfort. And then when you look at it, the swelling was evident. So tough situation right there. Let's get to the L.A. Rams. The Rams finally get a win after a tough skid. What page do you think they need to turn, though, there in L.A.? Well, they just got to keep playing, you know, they got to keep playing. And the thing mm -hmm. that stood out to both of us when, you know, whenever we watch and play, is just a lack of physicality. And I started thinking, well, maybe it's because they're California, they're a dome team, or maybe it's just the personnel that they have. But if you're, if you're getting beat up up front and Matthew Stafford, he's dropping back and he has zero confidence in the offensive line. And every time he drops back, he feels like he's going to get hit. You're going to see a different Matthew Stafford. We'll see if this game propels them and build some confidence. But I just don't see the same Rams team on defense, on offense, flying around that we saw earlier when they played against the Chicago Bears when we had that game, Jack. Yeah, yeah, I don't think like just beating Jacksonville fixes everything, right? It's not a it's not a cure all of course not. for all the woes that they've had this past month. It's just a win. And and sometimes you just desperately need a win and they certainly did. And maybe that springs them forward, but I don't think beating Jacksonville fixes everything they've had. Probably the plus side for them has been that Odell Beckham Jr. is starting to become something. He's starting to become a factor in this offense. And if Odell can start to pick up some of that slack, right? They had injuries at the wide receiver position. If they can give Cooper Cup another option there, another great option on the other side, he can just check all the ego stuff at the door and just focus on football. He could become a legitimate weapon for them. And I think we're starting to see that with OBJ. There was his touchdown this week. And you know, and, and he can be a weapon. I mean, he has to continue to build his confidence in the system and everything that, you know, that they're trying to do. But at the end of the day, they're still going to have to, you know, have to worry about running the football. They got to run the football. It can't be all Matthew Stafford. We've seen this year when it's all Matthew mm -hmm. Stafford, what happens? The offense line breaks down. They have some, they have some breakdowns. And then all of a sudden it's an interception or it's a sack or it's a strip sack and things like that. If you can't run the football, if they can't run the football and Sean McVay understands this, Matthew Stafford will be in trouble. Hi, I'm Mike Tirico, and thanks for watching. Make sure to hit subscribe for the latest news and highlights from NBC Sports.